photos. Okay, it's 7-11, 2024. Very apocalyptic song there, Mud Flood by One-Eyed Jack and the Shells. 7-11, very important date. This is the anniversary of Skylab falling to Earth in 1979. And also it is the anniversary of Richard Branson launching himself up to space on 7-11, 2021. And I was doing a little bit of research into the numbers here because I pointed this out the other night. So yes, Skylab Falls 711, which is 77 if you multiply it, weighs 77 tons. And we've been making these connections between the falling of the sky infrastructure and the sinking of the Twin Towers, the sinking of the Titanic, all of this in a composite representing the Tower of Babel. So interestingly, Flight 77, this is a 9-11 reference, was in the air for 77 minutes before it hits the 77-foot high Pentagon, which, uh, again, these are just a lot of interesting repeated numbers we see throughout these various psychological operations, and the fact that the space station fell on a 7-11 probably has some significance, so we'll continue to look into this. Uh, there's a lot going on in the news today in the political realm, political psy opera. I think Joe Biden is gaffing like crazy, as though that's going to change anything. There's some kind of a press conference, so we'll keep a look at that. Uh, I'll keep my eye on that. I was out today curve hunting. I went to the crest here, and at 10,300 feet, I didn't see any. And supposedly from where I was at, which is this ski slope. It's all dry right now. It's not snowed, but uh, there's a peak in Colorado one can see. So I have some photos I'll analyze later, see if there's any missing curvature. Maybe it's there. I mean, here's an image. This is from uh, Cliff's Edge overlooking Albuquerque. Again, just over 10,000 feet. I went past the fence where it said warning to get this view. So I'm, next I'm going to take my Google Maps and I'm going to chart out these various peaks here and just just get an idea. But one thing that I always find interesting when I look at clouds in the very distance is that they don't curve and go over the horizon like boats supposedly do. So you see a boat going over the horizon a few miles out. The cloud above it isn't curving over. Like the sky isn't curved in the exact same way. I mean something's missing, maybe it's just me. Let's see who is in the chat. We are joined here by 144,000, 2,330 days. Matt X, Osher, P. Trippa says, Elon Musk's Neuralink prepares for a second human trial aims superpower capabilities. I'm pretty sure I'm already Neuralinked. And Neuralink was kind of the, the main focus of that latest movie. I think it's called, is it Atlas? What was the movie with J-Lo, where she's in a robot body? Oh yeah, it was called Atlas. I watched it. It wasn't bad. It was comic booky, but it's all about how Neuralink in the future uh, ends. It just basically spells disaster for mankind, and you have this AI that looks like Elon Musk and becomes this AI terrorist. And like every AI bot in every Netflix movie, it decides at some point that in order to save Gaia, we must kill man reoccurring theme here. They try to inculcate misanthropy in all these various dystopian films, like, you did this, this is your fault, you should feel guilty. And I don't feel guilty for my carbon footprint, do any of you? I don't feel the least bit guilty. Let's see, alright, a few more rolling in, we'll give uh, the raft a few more moments to assemble here. Rome, Oswaldo, Dimitri 101, Diana South, Isabel Ann, says, I love the earlier shows. Yeah, we're starting early tonight. I'm working on a project. I'd like to have it complete by tomorrow. Hopefully I have everything done on time. 
Flozik says, what's up, IPS? Eric Stevens says, curve hunting in a sea of curverts. Clockwork113 says, howdy. Another big thing today, there's the actress who played the wife in The Shining, Shelley Duvall, has passed. And the interesting thing about this is today we also had the release of Fly Me to the Moon with Scarlett Johansson. The connection being, Fly Me to the Moon is about Kubrick faking the moon landing. Or something like that. I guess they don't use Kubrick, but they reference it, but it's about this idea that it was faked. And of course, she's in The Shining, directed by Kubrick, which has copious hints as to his role in, in Apollo 11, and 9-11, and COVID, and who knows what else. It's not quite done yet. We're still watching this uh, movie unroll. I mean, Kubrick didn't direct Apollo 11. You know, he directed the 20th century and part of the 21st. Shelley Duvall, Robert Altman, protege and tormented wife in The Shining, dies at 75, Hollywood Reporter. So there may be some deeper meaning to that. So I've gathered a number of comments and quotes about this movie and her role in it and The Shining, for example. Was it a moon landing confession? And a lot of people laugh at this and they just scoff at it. Mainstream, of course, will say, there's no way he faked the moon landing. And, and conspiracy theorists say, yeah, he did. He's trying to tell us because he felt bad. But they all gloss over the fact that he's equally displaying his involvement in other psychological operations other than Apollo 11. For example, the page that Jack leaves behind at the typewriter says, you see the word all as in all work, no play. Jay Widener sees, and this is from a breakdown of Room 237, a documentary about the conspiracy theories regarding The Shining. Widener sees A11 as short for Apollo 11. This is supposedly an insight into Kubrick's mental condition that working on Apollo 11 and having to keep it a secret made him go crazy. And this is indicated in the movie when Jack flips out and says to Shelley Duvall's character, Wendy, this is so typical of you. We've made an agreement. I have obligations to my employer. So some watching The Shining, seeing Jack's character flip out when his wife reads the typewriter, is a reference to she peeked over his shoulder as it had his involvement in the Apollo 11 deception. Which isn't the full story. And when I mention this, I also want to point out, because we're talking about how this movie isn't only focused on Apollo 11, and that's where all the conspiracy theorists look, but there is a lot of stuff pointing to 9-11 and the sequel to The Shining. Dr. Sleep is about a psychic baby that predicts 9-11. So how do you explain that? A couple of other points here. Widener claims the hexagonal patterns found on the carpets in the Overlook Hotel were designed to reference the Apollo 11 launching pads. Now this article is full of mockery about this, but... I don't understand the point of mocking objective truth. I mean, we're just talking about what is in the movie. This is subtext. Wider didn't stop at room numbers and carpet patterns. He claims that Danny sees the corpses of the twins is a reference to the Gemini missions before Apollo. Now, even though that is interesting, and I, I think that could be the case, there's a greater case to be made that they represent the Twin Towers. There were seven Apollo space missions, but only six landed in the hotel lobby. There are six crates of soft drink and seven up. Fascinating. Anyway, there's quite a lot more about this, but it's, it's hyper-focused on his supposed involvement in Apollo 11 to the exclusion of everything else. And then I found this on Cora, Thomas Free. He says... The Apollo shirt has nothing to do with the Apollo missions. Kubrick was into Kabbalism. Apollo is the sun at winter solstice from where it starts shining. Danny's the young sun, taking over the role of the old sun, Jack, who is the dying sun. The Shining is a story of the resurrection of the sun, the young sun taking over his father's place at winter solstice. Now this does comport with the movie. Room 237 is... September 23rd, 723, Fall Equinox, where the sun passes the constellation Libra and starts to die behind the horizon into the winter season. The sun is betrayed by the old lady Libra who lures the sun down into the night, into fall. Same as Eve betraying Adam in the Bible. This is true as well. It could easily have 
this astrotheological component where they're all personifications of the celestial bodies acting out the cycles of the year, this would be very consistent with everything else we see anyway, in addition to its relation to psychological operations. Not just the space ones, but again, like I said before, this one references Apollo I mean, 9-11 as well as Apollo 11. Okay, moving on. We'll get into more of that, I'm sure. There's some people who are breaking down the timing of her death. I'm sure it does matter. Uh, Dramitra and Ader 85 is talking about it. The Shining Actress, The Moon Landing, and The Beast. So I look forward to watching that. A couple of notes here I have. So we're planning on a group observation, July 20th to July 23rd, of the area in the sky where the ISS tracker claims or suggests a space station can be viewed. Now we're going to have a few ground rules as to what constitutes evidence, and I think I have a way to eliminate most of the false positives and eliminate fog. I have this theory that a lot of the things that we accept as true are essentially a matter of consensus trance. The consensus believes it, so it's given the benefit of the doubt. Where 99, or should I say, if 99 people say they think they see something, it may be, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, then another person comes in and they ask, well, I don't know if it's real or not, but everybody says they've seen something. So it creates this compelling consensus. And so why go against the grain? You know, you don't have you don't have any reason to if everybody's seen it. That's how people approach this. Like somebody's saying something, they can't all be wrong. And I think the reason this works is because the evidence submitted is ambiguous. If the people submitting the evidence say, I don't know what it is, maybe it's a UFO, maybe it's an airplane. Well then you get a hundred examples of that. It's just a bunch of maybes. And I'm saying here that this type of evidence should be rejected. It shouldn't even be allowed for consideration. If the person dropping it off says, I'm confused, I don't know if this is a mysterious craft or an airplane, then their evidence is not admissible. They should be able to stake a claim. Like, I am definitively making the claim that this is a space station. Examine this evidence. But it's always ambiguous. So the ambiguity needs to go, and one way to eliminate this is, I think, longer clips not just a little clip of a light in the sky, but we're talking like six minutes. That'll give plenty of time to reveal whether or not it's an airplane. And then second, I've, I've noticed that there are many claims that, well, maybe NASA's faking it with a plane or a blimp or a drone, but it would be impossible for any human-made craft to make the circuit of 25,000 miles in 90 seconds. It would have to be in space. It would have to be in orbit to have that velocity. So we can rule that out. And I have this axiom now, because we, when we, we receive these, these videos that are ambiguous, I don't know what it is. Well, that's because they have shifted the burden of proof to themselves. They have shifted the burden of proof with regard to the claim that there might be a space station there. And we don't have to accept that. We can say it's a plane until you can prove it's a mysterious object. Uh, UFOlogists fall for these things all the time. People who believe in UFOs will look at lights in the sky and they'll say, well, I don't know, maybe I want to believe it's more than just an airplane. So they allow this logic, this, it's maybe it's mysterious, but it, it should really be, it's plain, it's an airplane, until proven to be a mysterious object. There's really no middle ground here. Unless you can come up, unless you can, I guess, find evidence of some other type of craft that could be doing exactly what we're observing here, but it's got to be an airplane. We can't invent things. We can't invent secret drones that fly at speeds that are unheard of. So the new axiom for autohooksology will be moving lights in the sky are airplanes until proven otherwise. That's got to be the standard. We can't just open the door, crack, and say, well, maybe it's a UFO, maybe it's the Starship Enterprise. Sorry, it doesn't work. So I'm referring to this as maybe Bigfoot logic. And maybe Bigfoot means that you're inserting something supernatural or paranormal as a maybe, and that shouldn't be allowed.
it has to be what is known first. You have to rule out the natural before you insert the supernatural. And I came, I have this term because of the analogy I came up with for people who spot UFOs and space stations. I say you're camping in the woods and you hear something outside in the night. Multiple choice, A, B, C. What is it? A deer, a raccoon, or Bigfoot? If anybody answers Bigfoot, they fail the exam. There is no Bigfoot. Unless you have some information that I don't. And if we're inserting Bigfoot into the realm of possibility without evidence, then we're falling for the non sequitur fallacy. So you're going to say, well, I don't know, it's an animal or a human, and I have to rule these out before I can insert the possibility of a Bigfoot. Just basic rules of logic here, and so I'm suggesting here that if you're inserting the space station as a maybe when you haven't ruled out planes first, then that is giving them the benefit of the doubt, and it's accepting the burden of proof, which I am not doing. Even though we are getting behind a multiple observer observation of a transit of the ISS, I'm only doing so to make some points and to uh, further our understanding of how this misconception is spread, but I'm not accepting the burden of proof. I am fully anticipating, in my opinion, in my opinion, there's nothing there. They're not even faking it. In my opinion, it is entirely a hyperstition and a byproduct of rumor. I don't think there's any legitimate sightings that have been recorded correlated with the app that we can prove not to be planes. It only gets a pass as being the ISS through this maybe Bigfoot logic. Like, I saw a light, maybe, maybe not. So I'm killing the maybe. It doesn't get past our, our initial filter here. It's not a skeptical position to say maybe it's a UFO. But we'll get to this in a couple of weeks when we do this ISS observation. I have a few comments regarding the video we posted, ISS observation. Uh, Kate Emma says, How come it can be seen? Full stop. A 747 is 250 feet long and cruises at 30,000 feet. Yet the ISS is 350 feet in length, cruising at 250 miles high. The 747 plane is no more than a penny or less sized object at the height viewed from the ground during daylight hours, and at night is usually only visible by a few lights. So how can an object 100 feet longer, but 43 times the altitude, even be visible from the ground? Bright disco lights or not? Whatever object people claim to see as the ISS is either far bigger or far lower in altitude than NASA states. So logically the only possibility is it's some kind of plane used during visible dates and times. Otherwise it's utter nonsense. I have that same kind of cons uh, question about this as far as scale. You, know, you can watch an airplane go in front of the moon and you look at an ISS transit and it's like wait this thing's the size of a football field not much larger than one of these planes and yet it takes up the same amount of space on the moon as a transiting plane despite being 43 times further away. That's questionable. Eric Bliss says, Wow, great concept and idea. This cat, however, wants to infuse a lot of woo into the equation. Going forward, using all known data to capture and distinguish what's being observed will be the most legitimate and clean method of deciphering what is or isn't being seen. Eliminating all the what-ifs and the but-maybes before examining and recording is paramount. Once all objective knowns are eliminated after acquiring observational data, then infusing speculation might be necessary, but only then. And I agree, 17,000 miles per hour is an insane amount of speed and is required for this to complete the circuit. I look forward to seeing what's concluded with this one. Exactly. This is why we can't insert special secret space planes, mysterious objects, UFOs, because that's, well, one, it's, it's fallacious in itself to say, I don't know what did it, therefore a higher power did it, or some technology we've never heard of. But there are no craft in the atmosphere that could possibly do the 25,000 mile circuit in 90 minutes, which would be required to meet, the, meet each of these transit points. Icecat143 says there should be a distinction made, I, I believe, that the thing they call the ISS travels at incredible speeds and is not occupied by anyone. I'm not sure what the object is. Now listen to this comment, because this is typical. There is this truth or belief that there is some kind of object that is essentially a mysterious craft. 
they're trying to make the case that there is a mysterious craft. So again, I believe the thing they call the ISS travels at incredible speeds and is not occupied by anyone. I'm not sure what it is. All we know, we, all we know is it travels at incredible speeds. The videos they claim to be taken from the ISS are definitely not from the ISS, perhaps an airplane or satellite. Uh, I dispute that. The quote video from the ISS is done within a computer simulation, among other tricks we've already discerned. Goes on to say, perhaps from an airplane or satellite, but essentially there's no ISS with people in it, but there is an object circling and we don't know what it is. So this is the problem here. The problem here is that because of the rumor that something's up there and people are seeing it, people are asserting that there is an object moving at a high rate of speed, but nobody's in it because it would be impossible. And what I'm pointing out is that there is no craft that can go the necessary speeds without refueling, without leaving a trail. Uh, nor could something the shape of the ISS, which is anti-aerodynamic, even approach anything close to those speeds. So this person is inserting a mysterious craft, a UFO. This is ufology. And UFOs are huge. People who believe in UFOs far outnumber people who doubt the moon landing. So considering that, we're looking at, I think, not just gullibility, but people falling for bad argumentation. So I'm pointing out here that there is no evidence for something going faster than any known human craft, which is what, 5,000 miles per hour? A third of the speed required. But this is typical, and we're going to deal with all these various, I think, wrong answers as we approach this experiment, this observation. Violet Pengon says, hey, burning obelisk in Notre Dame again. A focus on self-improvement, no issues, keep it up. Awesome. Let's take a look at that. Notre Dame. I didn't catch that there was another fire there. Okay. Rowan Cathedral fire. Brought under control. Fire breaks out. Inspire of French Cathedral. What is going on here? Fire breaks out. Inspire of French Cathedral. Northern France. So it's another... Okay, this is another one. We, have, we had Notre Dame in 2019. More recently... We have the Dragon's Tail Spire in Copenhagen at the world's oldest stock exchange. That one burned, which had a lot of significance, I believe, to the 419 incineration of Maxwell Azrello, which was connected to the incineration of Dave Koresh at Waco and, of course, Oklahoma City bombing. So there's a number of connections here, but this burning spire, this has got to be something significant, some kind of a, um, something of a, I would say a psyop, something ceremonial. I don't think it's an accident. It's all symbolic, but interesting. Good to know. Thanks for the tip there. Evening Star 666 brought his Geometria calculator to work today. He shows up in the Discord server and he calculated that Bill Clinton's statement, I did not have relations with that woman, adds to 481 in ordinal, but 3,432 in reverse Sumerian, and 221 in reverse reduction. Now, I don't know what that means, but there's like eight calculators here that you can use to determine the numerical value of random statements, but there was a comment by Lean Dion. He said, nope, M multiple ciphers. Yes, multiple ciphers are a problem. I think you should have to only work with one. Otherwise, you risk utilizing the Texas sharpshooter fallacy and making it impossible to get wrong answers. Personally, I tend to trust reverse Sumerian over English ordinal when I'm predicting weather patterns and lotto numbers. Otherwise, I'm confident in reverse satanic for every other practical purpose. I mean, what do you all think? What's your favorite Gematria calculator? All right, let's see who's here. Uh, J. Dig says it seems lower. Shannon Jones, thank you for joining. Echo Charlie says, how can we assess if we're seeing the same object across the land? Now, that's a great point, because some will say, well, obviously, one fake plane can't do it. So there has to be multiples. Maybe it's multiples being launched in different locations. But my contention here is that, no, in order to meet the transit points, it would have to be going at that high rate of speed, or you would have to have 
a different ISS faker in every time zone? For, for what purpose? For the random flat earther globe skeptic who's going to actually take the time to look? The people who should be looking, the true fans, the NASA fanboys, the fan club, they don't make it a point to look at this stuff. Look at McToon. It's pathetic. It is so pathetic that McToon has never seen the ISS. He told me, he says, you can just get the app and look outside. And I said, have you done it? He paused. He considered lying, but he knew he couldn't get away with it. And after a lengthy pause and a few ums and ahs, he said, no, I have never seen it. I mean, I'm embarrassed for him. Upside Down Guy says, go out and touch grass. Yeah, I did. I, I went up uh, 10,500 feet. It was 30 degrees cooler, high altitude, which makes it a little more difficult to hike and do exercise. It was pretty... Um, actually, a lot of people train at that altitude to be more competitive at ground level. Let's see here. Jay Diggs, we're live. Yeah, we are live. I can open up phones if anybody wants to call in. Down at South says, I like the Gematria Abacus. Should have been 33 degrees cooler. Well, there's a restaurant at the top called 10-3. And the threes are in white font. And the word 10 is really small. And it's on each of the doors. So you get to the top and it does have this restaurant, which is kind of exclusive. And it says 33 on it. I couldn't get in. I did take some video. I was mostly up there doing watercolors. And I didn't see any curve. I was looking. And I'm, I'm being objective here. Uh, nor did I see any chemtrails, which is weird. And I saw many planes. Tiny, tiny little planes. Super high. I mean, it was incessant plane engine noise up there. I couldn't get away from that. Uh, thank you, Upside Down Guy. who ha He has just brought about 10 blue wrenches. So a number of you here are going to be doxxed more or less, or outed as being listeners. So if you thought you could hide and lurk, you kind of can't, because someone might hand you a wrench. Upside Down Guy received a membership, Blue Wrench Lodge. Nick Fingar received a membership. Tony Driscoll, Porto Complex, Clump, They Lie We See, Austin 108, Enslaved by Truth, and RJ. Isabel Ann says they don't spray on Thursdays. Yeah. We'll deal with chemtrails after we deal with the ISS. We're doing everyone a favor here. We're getting rid of chemtrails. We're getting rid of the space station. And we're getting rid of Mandela effects. So we're clearing the air. We're debunking a huge part of NASA's PSYOP. And we're restoring sanity to a lot of people who have been cerned into some parallel universe that really doesn't make any sense. Let me go ahead and get my phones open up. I'm going to go to my settings here, and should I play a song while I activate the phones? We have a new track from Symbia. Uh, let, me, let me put that in the comments below, by the way. And this is a big deal, you know, because we're occupying a space that has never really existed before, this off-world stage perspective, and it's really based on a philosophical approach to media, which is crucial today to understand you know, how you consume media, to understand the effect that the immersive illusion could have on your cognition and your worldview. And the terminology that we use is kind of new. You know, the, the, even the word auto-hoax, auto-hoaxers, auto-hoaxers were hated by truthers. Truthers were like, oh, you're not a truther. You're an auto-hoaxer. You automatically call things a hoax. You don't give people time to grieve with these tragedies. And I'm like, well, no, I, I don't care about these people. I'm assuming them to be actors, and um, I'm just going to go with fake until proven real because that's always how it is. There hasn't been any time where we've been wrong by approaching it with this methodology. Not that I can, not that I can find. In fact, let me bring this up, too, really quick. There was a, an article by, the, by NPR, and it was called The School Shootings That Weren't where they independently, accidentally did some journalism, and they investigated 235 different school shootings. And in their investigation, they realized that none of them were legitimate. These were all just false claims. The article's called The School Shootings That Weren't. 
and I'm working on an article right now called the ISS sightings that weren't because there are so many people who have made these claims and as we start looking closer and closer we're going to find that most people's claims are just airplanes and I want to point something out too just as a rule because uh, we're not a ufology channel we're not here to, to cater to ufology people people who believe in space and people who want to get abducted for their own reasons not, not judging and not kink shaming you want to be abducted by aliens and go through that thing go for it that's all Air Force mythology it doesn't exist it's all made up kind of a spoiler alert watch Mirage Men so we're not here to cater to people who um, are happy and comfortable making bold claims without providing requisite evidence so if you're gonna call in and claim that you're a UFO witness or even a space station witness hey I've seen the Starship Enterprise cool but show me a video and if you don't have a video then I'm gonna have to hang up on your claim or cut you off like we don't have time to entertain that stuff we don't have time for a meeting of the ISS believers society what was it that Barack Obama said we don't have a we don't have time for a meeting with the flatter society that made a lot of people believe isn't it funny how people believe the opposite of what the establishment says no matter what it is okay phones are open if you want to call in if you're a believer in the ISS and you don't have a video we don't want to hear it Oswald says IPS clearing the skies of chemtrails and ISS deepfakes absolutely we are cleaning it up we're gonna get rid of chemtrail lung and chemtrail lung is real you realize that the psychosomatic effect of believing that you're inhaling poisons over the years actually does create what you could call a chemtrail lung effect a lot of people have it and it's gonna progressively get worse and we can cure it and possibly even reverse it but we have to end it now Isabel N says have you had wi oh do you have vinegar in your water jug that's right and I, I'm curious Will Crow triple seven 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 ever admit that nothing you do in your front yard, no matter what you boil, nothing you do can affect the icy clouds in the stratosphere? I mean, there have been cirrus clouds and stratotropic cloud coverings, uh, gray skies. You know, gray skies existed before airplanes. The chemtrail enthusiasts believe, oh, we didn't have gray skies ever. There's always blue skies and a yellow sun, and then the chemtrails came. But you don't remember because you're just a young whippersnapper. I'm like, I always hear this from people. But I'm like, the Appleman chart that I reference, which tells you how you can predict the formation of condensation trails, is older than most of the people who claim that there weren't any chemtrails when they were kids. Elephant Tusks has a blue wrench. Isabel Ann, blue wrench. Ian McDonald, Glenn Hall, Tommy Retail Army, Carl Hungus, Forrest, Stanley Labarski, Joey Kirk, all have the Blue Wrench, Baja Pickleball, thank you Phil very much, appreciate that, super chat. Got a comment here from Tom Winway 3 he says, the boys last episode mentions a president rally assassination on 1-6. It's saturated. The media has been extremely saturated with predictive programming preparing us for the JF KFication of Donald Trump. The number is going to be on the screen if you want to call in. It is, there we go, 563-999-3664. And again, if you have any sort of claims about seeing mysterious craft, we're going to have to cut off the call or steer it into a more constructive direction. I have my Hitchens razor in hand, so you gotta be wary of that. Infinite Plane Radio. Hey, what's up caller? Can you hear me okay? No? Um, we'll give him just a moment here, one more time. I'm trying to unmute this caller. Okay. Uh, caller, when you can hear me, you can just speak up. We're um, 
covering a lot of ground today. I had a few notes. Moving lights in the sky are to be considered planes until proven otherwise. You can no longer maybe Bigfoot us into thinking it might be a mysterious craft. If you want to try calling back, it looks like your call got disconnected, and we'll try again. Diana South says, my skies are blue, but fire season is coming. Well, the sky is white and milky, and the sun is pale, and it's dying, according to a lot of the people with chemtrail lung. But again, we're going to deal with these things in order. First things first, ISS, then we'll do chemtrails, then we'll do the Mandela Effect. Alex Jones hosted a Twitter space with the title Assassinate Biden if he refuses to leave. Oh, it's will the deep state assassinate Biden if he refuses to leave. The headline was clipped by, I guess, just the way that it's formatted on X to say assassinate Biden. Okay. Uh, we were talking about Huma Abedin yesterday, uh, Anthony Weiner's uh, ex-wife. The one who was doing the ping pong game with Hillary Clinton while wearing the skinned faces of little girls, um, frazzle drip. Well, anyway, she's getting remarried to Alex Soros. Alex Soros, son of George Soros, Atlantic Magazine, has two different references now to Trump being JFK'd in these subliminal and not so subliminal ways. And these have been pointed out, even Laura Loomer pointed out that Alex Soros's magazine is making these indirect, the, well, she said direct, death threats toward Trump. And recently there was another article from the same, The Atlantic, which had something very similar. But yeah, Alex Soros and Uma Abedin are getting married. I hope she's checked his laptop. Upside down guy, handed out 10 more wrenches. This is where it's at. Harks, Benton, Liz Antoinette, Moss Man, Six Shop, AJ206, and Johnny's List. You are all members of the Blue Ranch Lodge. And you're going to be getting the first look at the Q doc I'm working on right now. I might even upload some of the raw footage. I really would like to get it done by tomorrow night. I have all the material. I'm kind of doing this sort of like a deposition, but it won't be boring. Joined by Nix, who has a blue wrench now, so does R. Cook. Echo Charlie said, why didn't you or Skyfish bring up the lanterns on other planes? Okay, that's a great question. There is a thing called needles in the sky. Before Sputnik, the U.S. Air Force simulated low Earth orbit satellites with airplanes with little flashlights on them. So it's pretty much established that it's fakeable, that you can fake things. But um, that was uh, just an example of how you know you can make the argument that, yeah, these things could be staged and faked. Psyops Matters joined us as nice topic. Yeah, let's get on. Okay, now this is interesting. Somebody else has noticed that there are some parallels. The media would call these eerie coincidences. I call this foreshadowing and predictive programming within the Metascript. But this is from Ellen Moore, another Metascriptor, his movie V for Vendetta, where one of the characters is basically Donald Trump. And I believe this came out in 2005. USA, Alcid Sphincter of Arcerica. I mean, what else can you say? He was a country that had everything, absolutely everything. And now, 20 years later, is what? the world's biggest leper colony. But now we are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. It wasn't the war they started. It wasn't the plague they created. It was judgment. I call it the plague from China. The plague. You think he's not up there? You think he's not watching over this country? We will be protected by God. How else can you explain it? He tested us, but we came through. We did what we had to do. Islington, Enfield, I was there, I saw it. Anyway, it goes on for a long time, but basically, parallels, parallels, parallels. Commenter says, what freaks me out, this is Biff Don on Twitter, what freaks me out more than anything is how certain standout movies are playing out almost exactly. You see, he wouldn't be freaked out 
if he knew that this is all by design, that this is part of the internal rehearsal for real world events provided to you through entertainment, which is really just propaganda and advertising for big bad ideas. Other people think this is some kind of mystical thing, or so some sort of AI or a demiurge at work, but no, this is Hollywood writers. Astronaut who spent 178 days in space shares the big lie he realized after seeing the Earth. The big lie? Now, it's not that the Earth is not a ball, according to him. The big lie is this. Our human systems treat everything, the very life support systems of our planet, as the wholly owned subsidiary of a global economy. And it's obvious now, from the vantage point of space, that we're living a lie. The Earth has a paper-thin layer that keeps everything alive. Again, you go to space, you see how fragile the Earth is, you come back down as an environmentalist. They call it the overview effect. It says, former NASA space cadet Ron Guerin, 62, says there's only one thing on his mind. We Earthlings are living a lie. And it's not that the Flat Earth Brigade were right, but it's much more compelling. All right, well, there you have it. That's the whole purpose of the space program, though. It's, it's God's eyes looking at man from above and realizing that we're screwing it all up and we need to change our ways. Okay, caller, can you hear me this time? Infinite Plane Radio. Is there a gremlin in the machine here? We're seemingly um, not getting our calls. I'll see if I can make this work. Okay, so there is a caller on hold. And um, unfortunately, the phone system is not really working with me, but we'll see if we can get them to try again. Okay, let's continue. Skyfish says it lines up with how it's done. That's basically what I've been speculating as a possibility. Interesting. Yeah, well, it's we have to go with plain until proven mysterious supernatural craft. We always have to default to the natural before we submit something supernatural. Okay, I'm wondering here if there's some kind of gremlin at work because it seems like we're being barraged with phone calls, but as fast as I can answer them, they're being dropped. If you're willing to try one more time, we have about 12 more minutes free. I have to get back to work on my documentary. All right, moving on. Yeah, Elephant Tusks, it's $49 for Blog Talk Radio. It's generally totally worth it. It's better than any alternative. It doesn't have an annoying ringer, and we haven't had any real major issues except maybe once or twice. But um, the thing is, yeah, you could fake a the appearance of a so-called satellite, I suppose, using a flashlight. At least you could allow astronomers on the ground to map the trajectory. But I don't think it could be sustainably faked for 20 years straight on a 25,000 mile circuit comporting with a 90 minute trek. I mean, 25,000 miles in 90 minutes. No, there, there aren't enough planes. That's, it's insane. It's an insane proposition. Uh, but we're going to look at this very closely. 720 to 723, we all have our opinions. In my opinion, NASA is lazy and they're not even faking it. They're relying on the fog of Siwar, rumor, and non sequitur arguments to get people to accept it. And then they have agents in the field, people who present fake evidence, false witnesses, ISS, and we do not accept, we will not accept ISS transits in front of the moon or in front of the sun. These rule out eyewitness observers, and these are the only ones they give us, which is ironic, or maybe it's purposeful. Maybe they want us to think that the question has been answered based on these and they don't want us to look on our own, but the fact of it is, if there's no eyewitnesses, I have no reason to believe it. There's an opportunity for it to be doctored. And the way we're doing it, there's no way to doctor it. We will be in the shot. And that's the thing too. We're in the shot. If I'm looking at the space station, flying across the sky, or an alleged space station, and, and I'm submitting the footage, I'm going to be in the shot. Not necessarily my face, but I'm going to be talking, pointing it out, 
and saying, look, this corresponds with the right time and angle. I will be in the shot. There's a continuous bit of footage there. Start to finish during the six minutes and you'll be able to follow the whole thing. But when we look at these transits that are provided on YouTube by these big channels, very slick productions, super expensive telescopes, etc., there's just too much room for doctoring and the person's not in the shot. In fact, to me, it looks like an insert shot. It's 100% more fakeable. So we have to rule those out. John and Sal says, maybe it's like the Batman logo projected on the sky. Well, we've heard many different ideas about what it, it could be. But I eventually realized, is it even there? Are we trying to make a case for something to explain a phenomenon without including the official explanation when there may not even be something there? Like, do we need to explain something away if it's not even there? And the more I look at supposed witnesses, the more I realize, you know what, the, the number of witnesses who will call in and claim that they've seen it are diminishing. The number of people who used to call in and say they would go try haven't reported back to us. So it's been pretty consistent. Okay, it looks like we have some callers calling back in. Hey, this time caller, can you hear me? Okay, there's one caller. Let's open up the second one. All right, caller number two, can you hear me? And we'll try caller number three. Okay, next, caller number three, you are on the line. All right, so it looks like we have three callers on the line and the phone system is rejecting or not responding to my clicks. We'll give it a moment. If you can hear me, if you're on the phones, uh, I apologize. I am doing everything I can, but we're not getting anything through. We have three people on the switchboard. I don't know what to do. But you can comment below. So if you have anything to add, please comment below if you have any added context you think people need to know. Okay, we covered Shelley Duvall possibly connected to Fly Me to the Moon. Her passing, uh, the, the news report. Not saying that it's implausible that this person actually passed. However, when we're looking at movie stars, especially with such a prominent role as that one, uh, there's reasons to think that these deaths, these exit points, these entry points and exit points are all scripted. Elephant Tusk says, I feel like these phone systems are programmed to F with the IPS. You know, it could be. You know, we could be getting hacked. So this phone system is failing. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss the phone calls. Apologize for that. We'll continue this conversation, though, tomorrow. Um, I have to finish up with a lot of work. We're working on a special project, and if I can get it completed by tomorrow, I'll be taking a trip on Saturday. Norba Law says, are you ignoring the Biden pro uh, conference? Yeah, I've been watching some clips, more gaffes, continuation of the responses after the debate, rumors that he's going to be pushed aside. I think it's just drama at this point. Uh, I don't think he's going to be deposed, but we'll see. We'll probably have more information about that tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on with the phone systems. Otherwise, we would be here longer. I'm going to see if I can fix it. Uh, we had four people calling in. I'll call and complain to Blog Talk Radio. I mean, really, I, I should probably um, call their customer service because we just lost three calls. Anyway, thanks for joining. We'll continue this tomorrow. Archives will be sent in the email. And we'll be scheduling the ISS observations for later this month. But i got to get back to working on the QDOC. This is... Chief Crow, Auto Hoax, or GTFO. Have a great evening.